and welcome to this video uh, in a location where it's the only place I could film because it is so messy everywhere else. So I hope you don't mind this location. But this is a video where I will be talking about the movies that I watched within the first three months of this year. I have decided to do quarterly wrap-ups rather than monthly wrap-ups for multiple reasons, but the main one is just I, I don't really have a whole lot of time anymore now that I have a new job, so not a whole lot of time to do videos, but also not a whole lot of time to watch movies and read books to like talk about them with you guys. So yeah, I'm going to do quarterly wrap-ups. For these first three months, I watched 17 movies, so I did watch a lot more than I thought I was going to watch, but I am very excited to talk about these movies with you. I know I also, too, usually start these videos off with my statistics for the month, uh, or I guess in, case, in this case three months, but I haven't done it. <laughs> so I'm not going to do it. I just haven't been keeping track. I mean, I've been kind of keeping track, but not enough to like really write them out and have them prepared and ready for you guys. So I think I'm just going to save statistics for the end of the year. And that is what we will do. But as usual, I'm going to start off talking about these movies in order of my least favorite to my favorite. <laughs> So the first movie I'm talking about is The Book of Love. I really love Sam Claflin, but this was definitely not his best work. And I really thought I was going to like this movie because I was in the mood for, you know, like just a, a silly rom-com. Not much substance to it, but I guess that's not what I was in the mood for because there really was like no substance and I thought the acting was subpar. The writing was awful, but I did like the premise of this movie and I think if they had just done it better, ugh, it would have been so good. So Henry, an English writer who has written a new book that has become a failure in the UK, gets notified that the dull book has been highly trending over in Mexico. Little does he know that Maria, a Spanish translator, turned the book into an erotic novel. Henry and Maria then swerve around Mexico to do a book tour and go through a wind of events. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. So I was just kind of let down and underwhelmed by this movie. And then my other two star movie that uh, I was so disappointed in. And I'm so upset that it's two stars. But that is The King's Man. I love The King's Man movies. Okay, the first one, five stars. The second one, I think was more like four stars. This one's two stars. I, ugh, especially because this, w I was so anticipating this movie. This movie was supposed to come out, I think in like 2019, and then something happened and they pushed it to 2020. And then of course 2020 happened and they were like, okay, can't do that. So they pushed it to 2020. They just kept pushing it back and back and back and back. And I finally saw it. It just didn't have the same feel as the previous two movies did, I definitely, the fight scenes were not filmed the same way. I don't know what happened, but they just, they were not filmed the same way. I think there was only one fight scene I actually liked, and that was the fight scene between, what's his name? And Rasputin, <laughs> which that, okay, the character of Rasputin, I was, it's definitely not what I was expecting, but it also just like rubbed me the wrong way. And I just think it was just too weird for a movie like this. Like that scene <laughs> right before the fighting happens was so, it felt so out of place in a movie like this. And I just, I didn't like that. I, I don't know. I think the writing of this was just so messy. And I, I think there were a lot of unnecessary things within this movie. I will say I did not see the twist coming at the end, so I liked that. And I do think the acting was overall very good, but it just, it couldn't salvage the writing. So this little tagline that we have about this movie, so as a collection of history's worst tyrants and criminal masterminds gather to plot a war to wipe out millions, 
one man must race against time to stop them. Wow, that is definitely not what I felt watching the movie. <laughs> I definitely expect uh, more from a Kingsman movie and I was just severely let down by this one. So now we're on to three stars and my first of the three stars is The Royal Treatment. Now granted, I did go into this movie thinking I was going to give it three stars and that's exactly what happened. Uh, I mean, I had fun watching it, but at the same time, it just also wasn't good. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Isabella runs her own salon and isn't afraid to speak her mind, while Prince Thomas runs his own country and is about to marry for duty rather than love. When Izzy and her fellow stylists get the opportunity of a lifetime to do the hair for the royal wedding, she and Prince Thomas learn that taking control of their own destiny requires following their hearts. It's a very predictable story um, with very like predictable um, conflicts. Just like it's predictable the entire time you're watching the movie. The biggest like sin that this movie does is the accents. I'm sorry. The accents are so bad, especially the New York accent. Like, it's just, it's so bad. It's so bad. But I still had a fun time, like, watching it anyway. So, hence why it's a three star. Next, I have uh, the Harry Potter 20th Anniversary Return to Hogwarts reunion documentary. It felt short. It felt like I didn't really learn a whole lot of new stuff. I think there was, like, maybe two things from this documentary that I found out like that was new uh, about the series and about the filming of the series and with, with the with the actors and whatnot. I really, I actually did like the moment between Emma and Rupert. I think they had like a really beautiful moment together uh, and it like made me tear up. <laughs> but overall, it just felt like it wasn't needed. It felt like I could have gone my life not watching this and it uh, nothing would have changed. My next three star is Moonshot. This is actually a movie I just watched two days ago, so <laughs> very still fresh in my mind, and it just felt average. This is also a teen romantic comedy, but this one takes place in space. Let me get you a synopsis here. Uh, in a future where Mars is terraformed and colonized by the best humanity has to offer, two very different college students wind up joining forces and sneak on board a space shuttle to the Red Planet in order to be united with their significant others. I love Lana Condor. I love Cole Sprouse. I don't think this they do their best in this movie, and I also don't think this movie gives them justice, because uh, I think they're both fantastic actors, but... I don't think this really gave them much to work with. I think for me it was mainly the dialogue that just really bugged me. Like the writing just sucked. It it was just it was just average. It was just average. Okay. Uh, but the one thing I loved about this film was the cinematography and the look of it. Oh my god, the use of colors and everything was just it was beautiful. I still have that one shot in my head where they go on like a spacewalk. And I think they, I think it's the sun that they're looking at and it's just such a beautiful shot. I also think I was just expecting a bit more from this, but it was just okay. Now my next one is definitely gonna get me a lot of hate, but my next three star movie is The Batman. Please don't come for me. I know every single person in my life who has watched this has given it five stars. Everyone I know loves this movie and thinks it's amazing. I, like, yes, I think it was shot very well. Um, and it was written well. Uh, but for me, it was way too long. I felt like I was in that theater for five hours. Okay, this movie is three hours long. It is, let me get the exact time. It is 176 minutes. The other thing that I think I hated the most about this movie, I keep doing this down here. If you keep hearing that sound, that's what it is. It's me making emphasis on a point. It was the romance between Batman and Catwoman. 
I did not feel the chemistry between them. I also just really didn't want it to be a romance. Like, it to me, the romance came out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere. I just like all of a sudden, they're like having a moment. And I'm like, wait, what? I, I didn't realize this was this. I thought she was into women. And like, it just, it, I really did not want this romance. Like, I didn't feel it. I didn't see it coming and I just I really didn't want the romance in the movie I just I didn't want it there and it was there and I I will give credit though to the actors I do think that they did a great job acting wise I just don't think I saw the chemistry my favorite character though was Commissioner Commissioner Gordon he was fantastic he was so good he was like the only part about the movie I really liked if I'm being honest like anytime I saw him on the screen I got excited when he wasn't I was like okay back to this I was just bored also watching this I was just like when is it over when can I leave like I'm done I'm not invested in this anymore I also was just very confused through most of it I don't know it could just be me I'm not really big into superhero movies so when there is a superhero movie that I like it's a very big deal but I think I'm just done with Batman. I've watched so many Batman movies that I've never really liked any of them. So I think it's just Batman itself. So the synopsis for the Batman is in his second year of fighting crime. Wait, when was his first year? Batman uncovers corruption in Gotham City. What's new? That connects to his own family while facing a serial killer known as the Riddler. And then the final three star movie that I watched is Turning Red. This is a Disney Plus. <laughs> a Disney Plus children's movie. What do I say about this? Okay, so in this we follow 13 year old May. She's experiencing the awkwardness of being a teenager with a twist. When she gets too excited, she transforms into a giant red panda. Um, I thought it was cute, but Overall, I just really didn't like the characters, especially our young characters. Like, I get it. Like, they are teenagers and they're acting like teenagers, but I just, it was just too annoying. <laughs> it was to a point where I was just, like, annoyed. And I think, like, by the end, it just, again, it got a little too crazy for me. So, it's three stars. <laughs> So my first in the 3.5 movie section is I Want You Back. I I enjoyed this. I thought it was funny and it was fun. But again, also super predictable. <laughs> and I don't mind when movies are predictable. But I don't know. Maybe I'm starting to like change as a person. And I'm not really into that anymore. I don't know. Let me tell you what this one's about. We follow Peter and Emma. They thought they were on the precipice of life's biggest moments, marriage, kids, houses in the suburbs, until their respective partners dumped them. Horrified to learn that the loves of their lives have already moved on, Peter and Emma hatch a hilarious plan to win back their exes with unexpected results. Um, I really do like the actors in this movie. I think I know all of them and I've seen all of them in stuff except for one person. And I really like all of these actors. But I think this movie was just subpar. It was just average, lackluster, but still a fun time. And I think I, I, I liked the romance between like the characters. I thought it was good. Just not great. It wasn't there for me. But I still had a fun time. I think I've said that so many times at this point. I just don't know what to say about this movie because, like, I had a fun time watching it, but I don't need to watch it again. Like, I'm fine. <laughs> it's not one I want to watch over and over again. It was just okay. That's why it's the lowest of the 3.5s. My next 3.5 star movie, so fitting, uh, it's the 355. <laughs> I did not plan it to be that way. Let me start with the synopsis because I, this was like, I watched this back in January. I'm trying to remember it. 
and I remember some of it, so hold on a sec. So a group of top female agents from American, British, Chinese, Colombian, and German government agencies are drawn together to try and stop an organization from acquiring a deadly weapon to send the world into chaos. I, okay, yes, I enjoyed this one. I, I loved the, the storyline, like the plot and the twist that came at the end, did not see it. I do think there were too many twists and I think um, some of the writing, especially dialogue wise, was just like okay. And I also think it was just maybe a tad smidgen too long, but overall I enjoyed it. My next 3.5 movie that I enjoyed was The Atom Project. So after accidentally crash landing in 2022, time traveling fighter pilot Adam Reed teams up with his 12 year old self on a mission to save the future. I liked it. Yes, I, I did enjoy this one. I liked the way it was shot and I enjoyed the story. I don't think I was like into it as much as I wanted it to be, but I loved the cast. Um, and I think the, the like, the chemistry between Ryan Reynolds and the guy who plays his younger self was really great. I loved their back and forth. I loved their dynamic. It was truly funny. There were some things that were just a little too unbelievable, but at the same time it is a sci-fi, so it's fine. But overall, I, I really liked it, just not as much as I wanted to. And then my last 3.5 star movie goes to The Sky Is Everywhere. This I do talk more in depth about uh, in uh, a video that I made. I'll link it down below where I read the book and then I watch the movie and I discuss both of them. And yeah, so I did really much enjoy this movie and I think it it was a good adaptation of the book, just not a great adaptation. This follows Lenny. She is a teen musical prodigy grieving the death of her sister when she finds herself caught between a new guy at school and her sister's devastated boyfriend. Through her vivid imagination and conflicted heart, Lenny navigates first love and first loss. I liked its depiction of grief. I think the book definitely does that better. Um, and I think the movie was just too artistic, but I loved the production design of this movie and I liked the dialogue. I just think the the use of certain characters was underutilized. Again, more of my thoughts on this movie are in that video, so go check it out. I have two four-star movies, and so my first of the four stars is Marry Me, a rom-com that I think was really great. Um, I love Owen Wilson. I love Jennifer Lopez. I did not think these two would have chemistry in a movie, but they do. I just had so much fun with this and I loved the music. Every single song was a banger. I cried watching this. I just think it was so adorable and I loved it. Let me give you a synopsis. So Marry Me explores the possibilities of what might happen when a superstar marries an average Joe as a joke and discovers that perhaps there are no accidents. I just realized I'm really flying through these movies. I'm like giving very brief synopses and very brief uh, critiques of them. But I also just don't have a lot of time to talk. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I really don't have a lot of time to talk, so I need to get going quickly. And then my last four star is Death on the Nile. This one as well, I have a video where I've already talked a lot of in-depth thoughts about this movie in a video, which I will link down below. I really loved the the characters and the way this was shot. I forget what it was about the movie that I had a critique about, but again, it's gonna be in that video. This was a great like murder mystery that I enjoyed. The Belgian sleuth Hercule Poirot, whose name I can never say, um, this is his Egyptian vacation aboard a glamorous river steamer, turns into a terrifying search for a murderer when a picture-perfect couple's idyllic honeymoon is tragically cut short. I think the cast was fantastic. I enjoyed the story. I loved the characters. The production value was great as well. Um, really cannot remember what my critique was about it, but I did have a critique, hence why it's four stars. Anyway, let's move on to my 4.5 stars. <laughs> which I do not have any five stars. So these four 4.5 stars are my favorite movies of the past three months. So the first one is The Lost City. I knew I was going to enjoy this movie. I just did not realize I was gonna enjoy it this much. Like this was fantastic. 
and so funny. The only reason I think it's not five stars is because I, I thought the first half was definitely way better than the second half, but it was just so fun. And I normally don't like laugh out loud when I watch a movie. Usually if I like find a movie funny, I'll like laugh in here, but I was laughing out loud. So this follows a reclusive romance novelist who was sure nothing could be worse than getting stuck on a book tour with her cover model uh, until a kidnapping attempt sweeps them both into a cutthroat jungle adventure, proving life can be so much stranger and more romantic than any of her paperback fictions. I just really loved this adventure. I loved this story. I thought Daniel Radcliffe did a great job as a villain. Um, Channing Tatum was hysterical. I just loved this movie. My next 4.5 star is Cyrano. I mean, just beautiful, fantastic. Let, let's start with a synopsis. Uh, a man ahead of his time, Cyrano de Bergerac dazzles whether with ferocious wordplay at a verbal joust or with brilliant swordplay in a duel. But convinced that his appearance renders him unworthy of the love of a devoted friend, voluminous Roxanne, Cyrano has yet to declare his feelings for her. And Roxanne has fallen in love at first sight with Christian. I think this story was told beautifully. I loved the music added to this. It was one of those movies where it was just heartbreaking and beautiful at the same time. And I think the, all three of those actors did a fantastic job. The only issue that didn't quite make it to five star was just the ending. I think I wanted a little bit more from the ending, but otherwise, oh my God, I, absolutely loved this movie. I want to watch it again. My next 4.5 star, my second favorite movie of the first three months was Uncharted. Unch no, Uncharted. Uncharted? Uncharted. Uncharted. Granted, I know this is based off of a video game. I know nothing about the video game. I just went into the movie because it's Tom Holland and it looked fun. It exceeded my expectations. I was expecting, you know, like 3.5, 4 star, like a fun romp but this was just so good i had i could not take the smile off my face after watching the movie i really really enjoyed it had a blast let me give you a synopsis real quick so a young street smart nathan drake and his wisecracking partner victor sully sullivan embark on a dangerous pursuit of the greatest treasure never found while also tracking clues that may lead to nathan's long lost brother and i just really loved the chemistry between tom holland and mark Wahlberg. there were a couple things that i saw in the trailer that weren't actually in the movie so i kind of wish some of those things had been in the movie and it just can't quite make it to five stars, unfortunately, but loved it. And then my last 4.5 star movie, my favorite so far of these past three months, West Side Story. I never saw the original. I think I saw like clips and scenes of the original and I've also never seen it live on stage, but I of course know about it and I know the songs, I know the storyline. As a musical theater, lover i just i know things about plays and musicals that i've never seen <laughs> but i thought this was fantastic everything about this movie was just fantastic i think i was crying by the end of it steven spielberg did a great job with this i do know some of like the differences between the original and this one but i think that the the changes don't hurt the, the story and like the, the the plot, I don't think it hurts it in any way. I think it just actually kind of elevates it. And I think the acting was really good. I, I don't know why I'm not giving it five stars. Again, five stars are reserved for like absolute perfection. And while I do think this was fantastic, I can't quite give it five stars. I can't quite say I truly would 100% love this movie. And I don't know why, but that's it for movies. I'm gonna quick also briefly talk about some TV shows that I have watched. And again, I really don't have a lot of time, so I'm not gonna say anything about the TV shows. I'm just gonna say whether I liked it or not. Okay, so in January, I watched season one of Ghosts. I actually really enjoyed this a lot. I think it's fun, funny. I also watched season six of Queer Eye. I think 
this is one of my least favorite seasons of Queer Eye, but I still really enjoyed it. I watched season two of The Witcher, also really enjoyed it. I think it started off a little bit confusing, but eventually I got there. And then I also have watched season one of How I Met Your Father. Uh, writing is questionable. It's, it's just all like meh. I also watched this with uh, a friend of mine, which honestly is the only thing that's really making it enjoyable is us watching it together. But as we're watching it, we constantly like seeing moments where we're like, that could have been written better. Like it could have been like this. And so it's okay, but it got a season two, so we'll see. In February, I watched season one of The After Party, which is on Apple TV. I really liked this as well. I like that each episode has like a different movie genre feel to it, and it's a murder mystery that takes place at a high school reunion. Um, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I also watched season three of Crikey. It's the Irwins. I love this show. It's just so wholesome and it's about animals. I can't wait to watch season four because I know that came out. I watched season one of Murderville, which was fun. I watched it all in one sitting. I think there's only six uh, episodes, but this was fun. It's on Netflix and we have a celebrity who is just going and trying to like solve a fake case, but we also have the actors around this celebrity portraying these characters and like this celebrity has to try and solve the crime while dealing with like I don't know how to explain it but it's just it's it's like a normal person just being thrown into like a tv show and they're like oh I just gotta play along and see if I can solve it. What this show reminds me of is when I went to a CSI museum that was like interactive and you had to like solve a case. That was so fun. Still the best museum I've ever been to in my life. Wish I could go again. It wasn't really like super funny but it was just fun and it was tr fun trying to see the actors if they could solve the case or not and then I also watched season nine of the Goldbergs I love the Goldbergs but I know it's, it's starting to get a little like old for me and I think it can end okay and then in March I watched season two of upload I enjoyed but I think we needed more episodes because the way it ended I I just didn't feel like that was a cliffhanger for season two. I think we could have done more, but I still enjoyed it. And then I also watched season two of Bridgerton, which also I liked season one more than season two. Season two was very much just like teasing. Like I watched this show for sexy time and we only get one scene of sexy time in the entire season. Most of it is just like light hand brushing and like breathing on the neck like it was a lot of just like teasing me and I'm like oh okay it's gonna happen something's gonna happen it's gonna happen and then nope no sexy time and uh there was one character I just just annoyed me too much but otherwise I enjoyed the season and I'm excited to see what they do with season three and that is all I'm going to discuss because I really need to leave but Please also go check out my book wrap up for this first quarter of the year and I will see you guys later with more videos. Bye!